Hey, welcome back to Petapixel. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we're looking at a cute little lens. This is the Canon STM RF. 28 millimeter f2.8 and I do happen to like 28 millimeter focal lengths myself pretty partial to them so I'm eager to get testing let's get to it Now this cute little lens got released just alongside the Canon EOS R100 very recently, and it's nice to see because I love 28s, but nobody else seems to. I mean, everybody's always making 20s and 24s, and you know, they want something dynamic or knows why they want 35 millimeters I don't get it and 28s just get left behind so I'm really happy to see this now this is a full frame lens but it's very compact I'm gonna be using it on the Canon EOS R5 today to really put it to the test with a higher resolution sensor I'm excited to see how this performs now this is absolutely a pancake lens the first thing you notice about it is just how small it is and also how lightweight it is 120 grams you understand that's a 17th of a knocked I don't think I've ever said that before about gear and knock terms so weighs nothing you can take it anywhere. Now this lens seeks 55 millimeter filters. It is not weather sealed, but incredibly they actually put a metal mount on this and I really didn't expect it. Can you imagine how light it would be if it was a plastic mount? Jeez. Now what you don't have is a lot of room for control. So you've got this one control ring. It's actually nicely knurled and it's well dampened and you've got a selector switch and that lets you go either between manual focus right over to autofocus or if you put it in the middle, you can use this control ring for aperture, shutter, ISO, something like that. That's a nice touch that they would actually do that on such an affordable lens, but to be honest, I'm just going to leave it on autofocus because I've got so many dial controls on the R5 already. So one of the things I wanted to do with this little 28 mil is some portraits that I actually never really do. Environmental portraits where I get a lot of the background, I get my subject, the beautiful Jordan here, and uh, I want to use a flash. So Westcott is actually our channel's preferred lighting sponsor, and uh, we've got the Westcott FJ400 flash. I love there's no cables, it's all battery powered, all working right through the FJX3 transmitter. And Jordan, what I want from you, uh, you know, you're the bad boy of the group, so I want you to... Oh, yeah. I don't know what the that is but that's his that's his tough so we're gonna go with it all right yes Jordan you know like some people find fireman calendars really sexy but I'm going for like former farm boy calendar oh, sexy okay. yeah Great. so I can own that I know you can so I want you to like bring in those Strathmore roots I want you to like pull the farming essence the minerals the soil the the cow and just pull that up through your tree trunk legs and exude it out of your your oh yeah so as far as autofocusing goes, this is an STM lens. It's got a stepping motor in it, which is usually slower. But to be honest, you can see here in the example, it's actually quite fast. From closest focusing to infinity, it's snappy. Snappy enough for any sort of street photography or action or something that I want to shoot with a wide lens like this. And I think that's because the elements are so lightweight. I mean, this is actually an interesting lens in that it uses a trio of spherical elements that are made out of plastic, basically resin-based, molded. They're not even circles. They're actually like rectangles just to cover the actual frame shape itself, but it all contributes to a very lightweight lens, and that means the focusing motor doesn't have to work hard to drive those elements. Close up time, we got water droplets on flowers and leaves, you can't resist that. Looking at the photo example here, luckily I like the composition of the pink flower at the top, but still the wet green leaves below, because frankly, I can't get any closer with this lens. It's just not a macro lens. You know, I get lots of working distance, because that's physically, as you can see there, as close as I can get, right there. So uh, it's about one to seven life size reproduction. So you often see a lot of compact wide angles that can do dual purposes, you know, sort of semi macros, but this is not one of them. So I don't know if you guys have noticed today, but it's like super gray out, like rainy. So we need it, Alberta's super dry, but it's terrible when I want to test things like flare and ghosting on a lens. But luckily we had that Westcott FJ400 flash with us. So what I decided to do was put it in the frame as our bright light source and test it out. And actually this lens did quite well, even though it's so affordable. So shooting wide open, not really washing out too much, not a serious loss. As we stop down, you'll notice there's a little bit of ghosting, but it's still very well controlled. So as far as flare goes, I expected this lens to do worse but actually handled it really well also consider the fact that it doesn't come with a hood in the box you could you know screw in a hood if you want to but it seems to not be an issue 
Now, if you get close enough with a wide angle lens like this, and the fact that it does have a fairly bright f2.8 aperture, you can get some shallow depth of field shots. So we thought we would test bokeh. And here you can see those specular highlights in the corners wide open, quite a bit of cat's eye. I mean, it's fine, it looks kind of nice. And that actually goes away pretty quickly as you stop down. I shot at f5 here, stop down. You can see that our specular highlights are fairly round. There's a little bit of polygonal shape, but no major onion rings or anything like that. And the actual transition from in focus to out of focus, you know, foreground and background, you can see here, maybe a little bit energetic, a little bit of a, a harsh touch to it, but pretty smooth. So overall, for an affordable lens, I think this does a nice job with bokeh. So would this adorable little lens be a nice video lens to use? Well, there are some pluses. I mean, first off, on a gimbal, it makes a lot of sense considering how small and lightweight and easy to balance it is. I mean, that could absolutely be a good use case for it. Also, I mentioned earlier, the manual focus ring is very well dampened and, you know, Canon mirrorless bodies have by far the nicest manual focus interface. So that's another plus, but there are some issues. So first off, this is a stepping motor, which actually is smooth to focus, but it does make a little bit of noise. There might be rare situations where that gets picked up on a microphone but the other thing is it breathes a lot okay so if you are doing a focus pull from a subject in the foreground and then you pull to the background what you'll find is your field of view might change and unfortunately in the case of this RF 28 millimeter 2.8 the breathing is there the field of view changes quite a bit Okay, so how sharp is this little 28 millimeter lens? Well, let's take a look at our test chart here. So first you can see shooting wide open F2.8 in the centers here. It's not that sharp actually. I mean, you'll notice that. There's a little bit of soft. It's not bad, okay? We're zoomed in quite heavily, but when you stop down to F5.6, you'll notice how it really sharpens up quite a bit in this center. Now, what about the corners? Well, again, let's look at it wide open. They're leaving something to be desired, aren't they? A little bit of softness here in the corners. And again, it's the same story. When you stop this lens down to F5.6, those corners sharpen up really nicely. So ideally, I'd want to shoot this 28 millimeter lens stop down when possible. Even F4, we notice quite a bit of improvement. It's like an old school lens way back in the day where you knew wide open wasn't that sharp and you always want to stop down if you can. For the occasional shot wide open, sure. On a lower resolution body, you're going to get away with even more. But certainly here, I want to stop down the lens at least one stop. Conclusion time. I like this lens. I mean, you know, you get what you pay for and you're paying relatively little for a compact little walk around lens. It's actually a decent optical performer. I could absolutely see this being a great sort of, uh, you know, take your RF full frame body out, throw just this lens on and just kind of wander around. It weighs nothing. It's basically only slightly bigger than a body cap. And a 28 mil is actually a really versatile focal length just for walking around doing street shots. I would also see this as being quite a decent use case for an APS-C body. I mean, this gives you roughly a 45 millimeter focal length, nice normal lens to walk around with. I don't like using full frame lenses on an APS-C body, but honestly with Canon, you really don't have any choice. So this could be a cute prime to throw on there. And again, it's small and it's lightweight and it's affordable. So I'm at least happy that we've got a nice little 28 millimeter here in the Canon RF lineup. We need more 28s from everybody. I'd love to see that, but the rain's starting to come down. This lens isn't weather sealed, so it's gonna drive us off our shoot. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave comments below, let us know what you think. Listen to our podcast on all your favorite podcasting apps. Just search for Petapixel Podcast, or you can find it right here on our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, check out our socials, click that notification bell so you don't miss any stuff in the future. But thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon with more episodes on Petapixel. Pixel.